Hey guys, so today what I'm going to do is I am going to go over the watercolor techniques that we'll be doing. We are going to use a variety of materials. We have water. This is kind of a gnarly paint container because I've used it for acrylic. You have your watercolor palette. This is just your fold palette that you have. Uh, you have some paper towels. You have your little kit that I made for you with the salt and the isopropyl alcohol. A couple things that you'll need to grab is either a white crayon if you have one or this is like a little um, wax stick. You can use a white candle if you have a white candle stick for wax or just like a white crayon for that. This is not something I have in your kit. If you don't have that, we'll figure it out. Your pipette that I put in with your kit your uh, fine line maskoid, masking fluid that I put in with your kit. This you'll take out of the box. And then you're going to carefully take the lid off of this masking fluid. This kind of like rubber cement. And put the top on. Set that aside. And then you need clear plastic wrap. This is just Target plastic wrap. No big deal. You just need a little bit of that. If you don't have that, you can take any uh, plastic wrap that you have around and use it for that. And then I have a little water sprayer. You don't have to have this, but it's helpful. And then I have my brushes and my pencil and my eraser. Notice that I've taped down my paper as I demonstrated in my other video. I don't know if I really talked about taping it down, but I have my paper taped down onto the table surface so it's nice and flat. And then I have my paper that's marked. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like my first one that I'm gonna do that I'm gonna demonstrate is wash. So I'm gonna make sure that I have my uh, paper towel available and I'm going to dip my paintbrush into my water and then I'm going to choose a color. I'm going to use this teal color here. You can use whatever color you want. I'm going to get that watercolor activated and I'm going to go over here get enough pigment on that brush and I'm going to try to wet on to dry, just paint in this area. I'm going outside of the edges a little bit, that's okay. Notice there is some puddling there. You just want this to be as solid of a color as possible. Notice I do have some puddling there. I'm gonna make it as consistent and flat wash as possible, so I'm going in different directions. Notice I'm not scrubbing it. And you can push and pull your paint, but you don't wanna do it like this, okay? You wanna just like pull the pigment where you want it or push and change in directions. You also don't wanna scrub the paper too much. Now I have a lot of puddling there, so I'm gonna clean up my brush a little bit, lift out. So I don't want that puddle, that darker there. I want it to be pretty flat. So it's gonna be a flat wash. Okay, I think that'll do. So now dry brush, pretty straightforward. You're gonna go with a fairly dry brush. If I shake the brush, nothing comes off, but it's a fairly dry brush, so much so that if I splay it out like this, it stays. This is dry brush, very straightforward. Your next one is resist, so with resist, you're going to use the maskoid, the masking fluid pen. So this is where I'm gonna go here. 
I'm gonna take the one part off of the pen. Notice you have like this little needle thing here. This stuff is kind of like rubber cement. You can draw with it. Just like that. It's pretty cool stuff, but then you wanna make sure that you put the nib back on the pin so it doesn't get clogged up in that needle. I don't know if you can see that very well, but I've written hello on there. Now I need to allow that to dry, so I'm actually going to leave that there and then skip over and do these two and then go back to it. So I'm gonna go back over here to my paints, going to wet into wet first, and I wanna actually wet down the paper with clear water, and you always wanna make sure your water stays clean. If it gets to the point where you've worked with it and the water gets murky, you want to actually um, wash out and get fresh water in your container. So I'm going in here and I'm gonna use this pink, and I'm actually gonna drop in some color and you can see it burst out. So this is wet into wet. You can use any colors you want, by the way. You'll learn a little bit about some of the color theory behind this. If I start dipping in uh, warm colors and cool colors, it'll get murky brown or gray. But this is wet into wet. See the puddling? If I get a smaller brush, got this brush, smaller flat brush, or your round brush, I can go in here and pull in some of this turquoise and drop it in and let it burst out. That's wet into wet. And even drip in with like clean water and allow that to bloom. You can see that. All right, so the next one's gonna be plastic wrap. So I'm gonna get some plastic wrap ready. For this, I only need a little bit. I'm just gonna tear off a little bit of plastic wrap here. So I just have this little bit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do wet into wet again for plastic wrap. That's important, wet into wet. Then I'm gonna do a pretty dark color so you can really see what I'm doing. I'm gonna use this Payne's Gray in the corner. I really need to refill this palette. And I'm gonna drop this in here. With plastic wrap, it's really critical that you have some pretty saturated dark color for it to work effectively. And then when it's still wet, I'm going to crinkle up the plastic wrap. I'm gonna set it on top. What it'll do is it'll give it a nice stained glass effect. So once I set it on there, I actually need something that's kind of heavy to set on it. So I'm gonna use my eraser. I'm gonna set it on there to make it stay put. So when it's dry, I'll peel off the eraser and the plastic wrap and it'll give you this crystal effect. Let's see. So let's go back up to the resist because I'm thinking it's probably about dry now. I kind of touch it, see if it is. It's tacky, but it's dry. So I'm gonna go. It's been a few minutes and I'm gonna go wet onto wet over it. So I think I'm gonna go with a different blue here and mix it, a couple of these blues together. You can mix your colors, remember. Get a little expressive. So now I'm just gonna go wet onto dry over it and you'll see that that resists the paint. So you can paint over it and now you can see my words. So that when this is dry, I can take an eraser and get that or rub that off, kind of like the stuff that they put on credit cards when they send them to you in the mail or um, maybe like the Bath and Body Works coupons where they have that like plasticky stuff, that adhesive on there. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over here to rubbing alcohol. That's this one. 
So I'm going to go in and I'm going to do wet onto dry. Paint this straight up on there. I'm going to go with my pipette. If carefully open this container, then you can drop in rubbing alcohol. It actually changes the pH of the paper. So it gives you kind of this bubble effect. But once you've done that to the paper and changed the pH of the paper, it can never go back. It never accepts the watercolor the same again. So it's something that you want to use carefully. Moving along over here to the salt, wet on to dry. There's a little spot where rubbing alcohol got on there. It's acting as a resist. But with salt, what it does is it attracts the water to one solitary area where the grain of salt is. So it gives it kind of that texture. So I'm gonna carefully open this where you can see the salt in there. Put some onto my hand. And I'm gonna sprinkle it onto here. And just kind of leave it on there. Lifting is a great one to use for if you make a mistake, but let me show you how lifting works. So I'm gonna grab some paint here. I'm gonna make sure I have enough paint on my brush. Wet on to dry, go right on here with a saturated color. And then, oops, I realized that I went over. And so here's what you can do. You can get another, this is lifting. So if you make a mistake in an area, you can get your brush wet, but not like puddled. And then you can go in here and you can lift out an area. So you need your paper towel for this. So lift and dab. Now you don't want to scrub, but you can definitely lift out pigment, but the paper is very sensitive. It doesn't like to have a lot of abrasion to it, but you can use this for like patterns or you can use it as kind of a correction. You always want to avoid now that first video I showed you that that other gal recorded was great, but one thing that she did do is she blotted the paper with paper towel. All that does is grind the pigment into the paper. You always wanna lift it out and then give it somewhere to go. So avoid the temptation to blot with a paper towel when you wanna fix a mistake. You wanna lift it with a clean brush like this. So the last one I'm going to show you how to do before this one is the masking tape. So with masking tape, you are going to take a piece, whatever, of masking tape, little pieces, big pieces, and you work it as a resist. But it's important to put it on your clothing or some sort of fabric before you put it on here because if I stick it on here and then go to peel it off later, it's going to tape, or tear your paper. I'm gonna put your masking tape on here. Got a little bit of my denim on here from my shorts. Put it on here. And now that works simply as a resist. You can probably see how that's gonna work. You just paint right over it. This is great for clean edges but not for smaller spaces. So that's the first part of your techniques. We'll go back and we'll do this one later after we take this off and so you can see what it looks like. Thank you for watching, it's your turn.